Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on interesting topics of modern Python programming and in this particular video we are going to talk about doubly ended queue or DQ, a part of Python collection, a container of a Python collection, okay? So if you look into the official Python documentation, the DQ is list-like container. It's a container but it is list-like, so you will not find much difference between list and DQ with fast appends and pops on either end. DQ is doubly ended queue, which means you can push and pop from either end. It is fast append and pops on either end. These things are extremely fast as compared to lists. So if you are using Python for something where you need faster access in these kind of operations, consider using DQ. So since it is compared with list, let's start with list. So lists are mutable sequences typically used to you know, store collection of homogeneous items. It is possible to store heterogeneous things, but it is typically used for that. So I can create a list of integer as well as list of string. I can see list of integer as well as list of string. If we go ahead and see the type of list, it will say list and if we go ahead and see the type of individual elements it will be string in case of str2 so this was a very simple recap of list let's go ahead and talk about dq the topic of this video the syntax is very similar to list and you need to import dq from collection you can create dq very similar to list you just need to replace the syntax list with dq so here is how you create your DQ and if you go ahead and see it, it is very similar to the list. Now once you create DQ, when it is very similar to list, you need to look into the operations because this is where the difference comes. And some of the basic operations of DQs are, you know, appending an item. So we can append an item at the end by calling append. So we will say DQ.append11. So if we go ahead and see the DQ now. 11 is appended at the end. Now, in DQ, since it is doubly ended queue, you can append at the other end also, which is the beginning of the queue. So we can use a function called append left. I am appending zero. And once I do that, you can see zero is there in the beginning. Okay, so append and append left. Similarly, we can remove data or pop data from the DQ from the both end. And DQ uses a similar function for that. So we can use either pop or pop left. The name is self-explanatory. Pop means pop from the end. Pop left means pop from the beginning. So if I go ahead and call pop left, I got zero and it is actually removed from my DQ. It's not that I got it and it is still there and we need to do something to remove it. No, it is there in the DQ. And if I just call pop, the last item from the right side will be removed. Now, just like list, values can be changed. Any DQ index value can be changed using index notation. So in here, the first item, I am changing it from 2 to 200. And if I go ahead and see the DQ, 2 is changed to 200, okay? Now, appending multiple items, both at the beginning as well as at the end. So you know, DQ gives you a functionality to expand the DQ. Using append, you can pass only one item, but with extend, you can pass some iterable which will help the DQ to expand, okay? So in here, I'm creating a list with 20, 21, 22, and a tuple with 31 to 34. Now, if I want to extend the list at the end, I will call the extend function and I'm passing the list, okay? So if you go ahead and see the DQ, it is extended at the end with 20, 21 and 22. Now, what if I need to extend from the beginning? Similar to, you know, append, pop, there is a left version of the function called extend left. And if you go ahead and call that function, you can see that 34, 33, 32, 31 is appended. But have you seen it is appended in a reverse order? So in this particular tuple, I have written 31, 32, 33, 34, but when I append it, it is 34, 33, 32, 31. 
remember this okay now let's create the dq again because we need to learn some more thing and for simplicity let's create the simple dq now apart from inserting data from the beginning as well as from the end you can insert the data in the middle at a particular index so you can call insert function with the index and whatever you want to insert at that point of time i am inserting a list at second index and you can see at the second index 0 1 2 i have this list 11 22 okay now there is an interesting property of dq or not property sorry not property it's a function of dq which changes the property of dq to behave like a circular buffer and I have used it in one specific scenario and I find it useful. So if you are using something similar to circular buffer, you can use this function called rotate. So at this moment of time, the DQ is 1, 2, list, 3, 4, 5. If I rotate by 2, if I rotate by 2, so what are the last two elements, 4 and 5? Look what will happen. If I rotate by 2, 4 and 5 comes at the beginning and everything is pushed ahead. So it is kind of rotation okay and you know this is helpful you can rotate by index rotate by two rotate by one rotate by three you can do that and you know this circular buffer kind of characteristics is sometimes useful if you are handling request any kind of request microservices request and this is a crude way of treating the same as a circular buffer but one of the easiest i felt okay it is also possible to reverse just call the function and this dq is reversed and clearing the queue is also easy just call clear a function you will get an empty dq okay now by default whatever dq we create it comes with no limit okay but we can provide a limit in the dq like limit means how many number of elements a dq can have so here is how we can create dq with a limit so while creating the dq we will pass another parameter uh, which is the length max length of the dq now here the length of dq is 5 and i am extending it with 5 elements okay and here is how my dq looks like now the very interesting thing you would like to know that what will happen if i insert more will it you know throw some exception will it give some error well let's go ahead and see what do you think should happen if i append 6 everything works well nothing happened no error no exception but if we go ahead and see the dq you can see that two three four five six it is left shifted one is gone and six is accommodated if i append seven what will happen two will be gone and seven will be accommodated so length will be you know max length only but if you keep on adding things left of the things will be popped out and it will be accommodated at the end and similar behavior will happen with extend to if i am extending with four uh, you know elements then you know only seven is there rest of the things are accommodated by popping out left shift always remember left shift it will be easy for you to you know remember it once you go beyond a limit it left shifts okay since there is no error and no exception it is difficult sometimes to you know debug what is actually going on and if you want to check the length of the you know maximum length of the dq you can use max length parameter it will be none if you do not specify any length in that case it is system defined or python defined i don't know what that is now before i close this video the dq is faster than list and from the python documentation it is written that dq support thread safe remember thread safe memory efficient appends and pops from either side of the dq with approximately the same constant time performance this is very very important very very interesting constant time performance okay and that's why people use dq so since this is written in python documentation there is no need to check anything we can just blindly test on this but let's see one append example with uh, you know both list and uh, dq so uh, i have a dq and i am timing it by appending 11. let me see what happens so this is what comes as a output i am creating a list and i am doing the same thing with list you will always find that there is a difference between list and dq where dq is faster so this is with very small set of elements 
Remember in a production code where you have lots and lots of things, it will make a difference. So that's all about today's video. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. We will meet again. Until the next time we meet, good day, goodbye. You take care.